8182, two plus two matinee, right around the corner from where we are. The thing that stands out from that show, even though it was crowd, was Dr. No uh, just rolling up in a van and hanging out and bullshitting. And that, that's the thing that really stayed with me. Jimmy Drescher. That man's quicker than Henny Youngman, uh, Mel Blanc, and Jackie Mason. He could beat all of them in a freestyle jam. The 12 weeks we were on the road with the Bad Brains in 89, the Quickness Tour. Gary and Daryl were like uncles to me. It was almost like I was learning to become a man. It was, it was a time when Leeway was on a high rise and, and the business was distorting hardcore because the way it was growing exponentially and the industry was starting to really pay attention. Um, I don't think I'd really be a lot of who I was if I didn't have that time. It's not hardcore, but now because we lost both these guys, I wish I caught more David Bowie and Lemmy shows. And I think uh, outside of our music and this thing of ours, we're losing so many great artists due to time that, you know, uh, we, we forget where all this music comes from. I would say who's to blame because I started incorporating more R&B with what I was trying to do. Uh, Hornet's Nest, because as we got older, I think we really became more of a, of a solid band and, and um, product, which we never played live. It just had such a drive to it. And, um, you know, I stole Bob Marley on the chorus because it's simple. It's life is my right and I refuse to give up the fight. Life is my right and I refuse. And, you know, I stole that from Bob. Thank you, Bob. Queens. A king comes from all queens. The golden area when, when I was strictly a fan, yeah. it would be those Rock Hotel Bad Brain shows from Jane Street. I mean, that was the most memorable, uh, you know, hands down. Individuality. We are a scene born from misfits and outcasts. It was about no trend and no conformity. And all I see is conformity and trend. Be yourself, be an individual. I don't know. I think at a time, especially when talking about the quickness period, Sick of It All might have been one of them because at that time I was living with Armand and Pete. Um, and those two years were, I think, the last couple of years of all bands and all of the New York scene being together as a family. Because after that, and, and it had a lot to do with the industry bringing such a distortion to the game, that uh, the scene kind of died and everybody branched away. It's hardcore dead. As long as kids are showing up for shows, it's never dead. I don't care if I play in front of 30 kids, they're going home with fucking smiles on their faces.